Kubros is very important in the access control domain. I'm going to go through the basics of it, you can understand it, and the key concepts. Just enough, no more. Kubros is a three-headed dog guarding the gates of Hades in Greek mythology. It was actually developed in MIT during the 1980s, internally known as Project Athena. The first three releases was internal only. Now, a single sign-on solution using one-factor authentication only, and we'll see later that that is a weakness. It's generally accepted and used in most operating systems. You can, for example, use Kerberos as an authentication mechanism within a Cisco router talking to a Microsoft TMG ISO firewall or to a Linux or Unix system in the back end. In Windows, it is the de facto standard authentication mechanism. You don't need to install it. It is just there and it's just being used in the back end. Keywords we have to know. There's things like the KDC, which is the key distribution center. We have the AS, which is the authentication server. We have TGS, which is known as the ticket granting service. And I see some manuals do refer to it as the ticket granting server. We have the UPN, which is a user principal name. You as a user logging on, that's that, it's a UPN. For example, my UPN in my environment will be Mervin at sacs.co.za. We have a service principal name, um, SPN, which can be a printer on your network. There's also issues like delegation of authentication, also known as impersonation, constraint delegation, so limitation of what you can do, and also protocol transition meaning that as a network service, a protocol, a port will be specifically controlled in this environment. Within the access control domain, one of the components you need to know is Kerberos. Now Kerberos is the three-headed dog guarding the gates of Hades in Greek mythology. But here it is named after an access control system, which is single sign-on. Now this was developed with, uh, in MIT, and was known as Project Athena. Now from version 1 to 3 it was only internal and version 4 um, it was made as a public um, public release. Now version 4 and 5 currently is version 5. Um, it is the de facto standard authentication mechanism within the Windows 2000 onwards um, authentication mechanism. Version 4 had the problem where it was honed and locked onto one network card and this was a problem so if you had multiple network cards into the server you may have a problem of authentication within the network version 5 currently and it is only an authentication uh, protocol however microsoft has got extensions to make an authorization protocol as well now the way this works if we actually look at the user that would like access to a resource and you will have the server, the Kerberos server or the KDC in your network. Now, for the user to get access to the resource, he has to request access to the resource. The server will look at the UPN or the user principal name and it will look at that user principal name in the server and obtain the current secret key of that UPN. Now, if we look at a service model here, service uh, principal name, the SPN, and as you try to get access to it, the server will have both the UPN and the SPN inside the KDC in a lookup table, and both will have secret keys. It will use those secret keys with a master key of the server to generate a session key. Then also, once you've requested any service, you will obtain from the KDC a ticket granting ticket, and that ticket is available for a set period of time and after that set period of time it will be renewed and it will happen in the background now default microsoft installs 800 seconds now talking about 800 seconds talking about microsoft if you sat in your office and you try to log on to your domain and you have the error message coming back you cannot log on because the time of the workstation is not in synchronization with the server well, basically, that is a Kerberos issue. It means that your workstation is with outside that 800-second time window. So the, the preamble of Kerberos, or the handshake that happens between the workstation and the server, um, doesn't occur. So the process is in the morning, when you log on, 
you will actually log on to the server and the server will give you a ticket granting ticket. After that, every resource that you require access to, the ticket granting ticket will issue and generate a ticket for that session. Any other resource after the first. It can be a print server, it could be a network service, anything like that. Now, once you have access, this happens all in the background, so it's seamless. What I'd like to look at the next step is to look at some advantages of the Kerberos protocol, disadvantages of the design of that protocol, what other options we'll see Sesame later, which is a replacement or development of replacement for Kerberos that does asymmetric encryption. Then we can actually look at um, the process in detail of how you would log into your server or workstation in the morning at your desktop onto the server and how everything happens in the back end. Some of the design considerations which is very good for Kerberos is that no passwords are communicated over the network. There's cryptographic protection against spoofing and if you will see or have seen in the cryptographic domain cryptography is that symmetric encryption that Kerberos uses, which is DES, Data Encryption Standard, is very difficult to crack, but it doesn't allow for key management, easy key management. There's a limited period of validity, so that if the transaction or the packet is sent, resource uh, is used in 800 seconds, or depending on what your configuration is, it will invalidate that session key and you have to reapply although it happens the back end to ensure that you are the user or that resource is valid in the network it there are timestamps to prevent replay attacks in the network also gives us the opportunity to do mutual authentication meaning that a me to a resource and a resource back to myself possible issues in the design is that we need a constant availability of a trusted ticket granting server or a KDC. If that's not there, the system falls over. Authenticity of service is dependent on a trust relationship between the KDC and every server in that environment. It requires timely transactions. This means that if the servers do not sync up on a time base to the workstation, Kerberos will fail or not Kerberos will fail, but you cannot get access to your resource. A subverted workstation can save and replay user passwords, and that is within that time period, say 800 seconds that we said before. It is vulnerable to simple password attacks. That to me is password guessing. Scalability is definitely an issue. And this is also the Kerberos, the protocol that Kerberos uses in the back end is UDP. And a lot of firewalls, the rules don't allow UDP to traverse a firewall from the, the inside to the outside of the network. Also, every object has to be Kerberized. This means if I write an application, I have to write Kerberos Insider to be able to utilize the authentication mechanism in the environment. Let's look at this example of the process, how Kerberos authentication, the protocol works. I would come early in the morning, for example, sit down at my desk, press Control Alt Delete using Windows here, and it will request my user ID and password. I would enter that, press enter. Now, the Kerberos software on my computer sends my username to the authentication server. And this is on the KDC. This in turn sends a ticket granting ticket back to me based on my UPN, which is encrypted with my password, my secret key. Well, so if I have entered the correct password, this ticket granting ticket or the TGT is decrypted and I've got access to my local workstation. So this is in the Windows authentication realm that this is happening. When I need to access a resource, 
my system here would send the T ticket granting ticket to the ticket granting service which runs on the KDC. This allows me to prove that I am who I say who I am. Then the ticket granting service on the server sends a second ticket back to me which I will use then to authenticate to my resource, my file, my print server that I need access to. The second ticket contains two instances of the same session key, one encrypted with my secret key, and the other one encrypted with the print server's secret key. Now remember, we have a UPN which is on the KDC for my user and also a SPN, a service which is also on the KDC. And that is where those are related to the actual secret keys, both of the UPN and the SPN. Now, the second ticket also contains the authenticator, which contains the identification information only of myself, so that the resource will understand that I am trying to get to it. It will contain my IP address, a sequential number to actually protect in the, uh, against replay attacks and also a timestamp. I would receive on my system, my system will then receive the second ticket. It decrypts and extracts the session key. It adds a second authenticator of set of identification information to the ticket and sends that ticket to the print server. The print server receives the ticket decrypts and extracts the session key. It decrypts and extracts the two authenticators in the ticket. If this resource or the print server can decrypt and extract the session key, it knows that the KDC created the ticket. So it trusts that server. This is why it's important for that server to be physically secured so nobody can get access to it. Then, if the authenticator information of the KDC and the user put to the ticket matches, the resource will know that the received ticket is from the correct principle. Once this is completed, it means that I have access and properly authenticated to that resource and I can access it for my 800 seconds as configured by the operating system. Once the 800 seconds complete, the whole process will happen in the background again. Final thoughts here is that the physical security of the key distribution server, the KDC, is imperative for the Kerberos to be trusted. If the KDC gets compromised, access to the secret key of each object as well as the KDC master encryption key results in an untrusted authentication solution. And this will be a single point of failure. There's also, due to the fact that Kerberos is based only on passwords, it's a one-factor solution. If you need a two-factor solution, Kerberos smart card solutions do exist. But however, it's very expensive. Now in the next section, we'll look at some of the development that was done in a product called Sesame to address some of the weaknesses of Kerberos.